Here, O dot, in our pristine towers, we lead such safe and privileged lives. Our endless selfies showcasing our beautiful lies with our beaming megawatt smiles. A burning question no more inconsequential than our order, ill grey, soy on the side. But occasionally, oh so occasionally, real life peeks through with its creaks, its cracks and crevices. The ugly but plain truth casts its shadow on our green plains. We join the unwashed masses, gravity holds sway, our feet touch the ground, we smell our fear, our faces crease in uncertainty. We pause, we have to turn away from our PowerPoint, we remove our hands from the keyboard and coding is stopped for the day. Can we as technologists do more? Can we in our youth focus our energies and passion? Can we open our eyes to the world around us, to the injustice that surrounds us, to take some time out and do battle for a worthwhile cause? Can we bring meaning? Can we make an impact, a social impact that makes our lives matter more? Last year we gathered on several occasions, our zealous zeal unbounded in small teams to tackle a cause. We used hackathons to focus, to learn, to think, to try, to feed the soul. It is an imperfect system, but if we can start to look beyond our iPhone's camera's lens, at a younger age, to see beyond our field of view, to see what's authentic and what's fake, to refuse to let destiny become reality. The fusion of technology, creativity and humanity, where everything is possible, not balking but applying to where there is the greatest need? Can technology transform society? Can we serve people more? That would be a sight to see. Join me, or don't join me, just take stock, just think beyond your safe and pretty life. Apply that brain, that passion, those ideas. Bring change, breathe change, make change. Be the difference. Oh, my beloved father, my daughter, my son, my wife, my mother, my sister, my friend, my grandfather, a stranger, one day you will fear no more. Help me, please, to conquer my terror. Let me sleep undisturbed until the dawn listening intently at floorboards creaking, with staggering footsteps as they near my door. Knowing ultimately what comes next will shame me so completely to my core for the pain and anguish that will follow to be locked up, put away forevermore. Does my wretched life mean so little? Can you not hear beyond your walls? Please look at me, save me. Why can't you believe what I said before? Does your own action have any justification? Do you not see me and my cause? My life destroyed, my future now uncertain. Please tell me, what's my recourse? Remember me, remember me, for my life is fading. Remember me, my glorious years, bittersweet distant memories, so precious they melt away inexorably. Before my eyes, shades are drawn tightly, mist surrounds my senses, it is dusk for me. Confusion, illusion, fear for company, my words escape. A hideous leak, a breach, I cannot seal an effect, I cannot mask, a remedy I cannot make. I sit alone now, a stranger's place, in the dark, cold, ignored, forgotten in piss and shit, leaking on the floor, a stench so strong, it's nauseating. And wait for others to remember, to remember me, scurrying past, no time, no regret, absent eyes on a clock, they're gone again, gone again. 
silence, a cycle ending, a babe again, but without that innate curiosity, for life is spent, zeal stolen before my time. It's not fair, I had more time, 20 more years, please, more time. Remember me, please remember me, as I once was, living life, laughter on anchor in twilight years, before I was a burden, before I was too much, too much to share, to care, the shame I brought, I'm sorry, remember me. But in an instant, a joyous moment, trigger, unknown, confusion gone for the briefest time, my past seemed so sweet, my family remembered, Bathe me in sweetness and love, they embrace me, colour returns. And the laughter, as if it was yesterday, they bring tears to my eyes. My hands, they tense, my throat constricts, I shake, a sob escapes. Remember me, remember. Australians all let us rejoice, for we are young and free. We've golden soil and wealth for toil, our home is girthed by sea. A land abounds in nature's gifts, of beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing, advance Australia fair. The majestic beauty of our land, its frailty so easily exposed. Crops inundated by floods and starved by drought, farmers wondering what to sow. The beauty of our coastal plains and our coral reefs diversity, whispering their bittersweet swan song to our nation so poignantly. A story of unrelenting turmoil and tragedy, unlistening, unheard, unrecognized, affected by this new and terrible reality. The imperceptible creeping rise of H2O, its higher tides and storm surges with its urges to wash away all signs of our humanity while we struggle to see the impending calamity as it lurches ever closer. The harsh price we pay with weather patterns taking no pity on us damaged lands, our bedraggled homes pummeled by downpours and blight, our browning lawns gasping, eking out paltry vapours as they fight for their very survival. We stare on in false ecstasy with false bravado at our lucky country with idle chatter and polite social conversation. We fixate on investment of house prices with all their fallacies, choosing to ignore the elephant trumpeting in our room. Can you not see Caesar? Rome is burning. We stare on, our gaze is carefully ignoring that which is in front of our eyes like lobsters in a pot, frozen, oblivious to our impending culinary demise and odeur we quickly nibble digested and our remains to be cast aside why so much apathy to this danger the signals clearly in front of our eyes how big do the billboards need to be to be recognized do the neon lights need to be flashing the fog horns blaring what can we surmise what will it take for us to stumble off the couch stumbling as if drunk with bleary eyes with uncertainty with sweaty bodies fattened by inaction with little consensus off the right path with trepidation and meditation but now with conviction be brave suck it in we will enter the fray lead on Macduff. lead on are we dear frozen by some blinding headlight is our political system too broken too focused on sound bites that have no might a media chasing headline stories of vacuous celebrities that amount only to a pregnant pause 
A scientist shouting in the wilderness, their voices drowned out, not finding a voice that can be heard, not finding a connection to the greater cause. In this desert, do we simply bury our heads in the sand? Is the problem too large for us to understand? So do we shrug our shoulders and continue on our way? Do we have the power and wherewithal to stay, to fight? Are we delegating our responsibility, believing that a higher power would be our salvation? That there will be no need for consternation? That the mighty Lord in his revelations will save us from our flaws? Is that our mitigation? But just in case, can we not in our busy lives simply take a moment to inhale, close our eyes, listen, pause? Do we not feel some foreboding? A faint tingling in our bodies, the tip of our tongue, our second sense? If we strain our eyes, do we not see the shadows lurking? How do we tear away a popcorn generation, one weaned on the teat that is our fixation, a Facebook generation that will pout, take a pic and share their devotion, hungry counting their ephemeral adulation and a commitment so slight that as a wispy breeze it simply ends with a light. How do we put a stop to mind-numbing activity? How do we shift our gaze to the fore to help us realize that the world's fuse has been lit, that this may lead to a moment, a moment that leaves the world with no option, no option but to eject us, eject us while our species, our species that is still in its infancy, a not so innocent baby in arms snuffed out before its legacy has even begun. How do we wake up a generation from its slumber that it is being led by a joker, an orange pied piper, a ludicrous New Yorker, perhaps to our eventual elimination, to shake man, woman and child from their complacency to show them it is not too late, that we can crawl to the starting gate and that we through many small steps walk the talk with conviction and then as a nation our future generations will be ready to run at the problem head on tempered by experience and armed with the knowledge that there is no one else that we have gifted them this world this problem to solve in our shame for there is no one else to blame i hope not too late there is hope can we use technology effectively to connect emotionally, to tear the bleary-eyed from their stupor with tools to hook them, not with far-fetched fantasy, but to show them the effects of climate change now to the hometowns, communities and families, with tools that let them see the impact firsthand, that tell a story they can understand, to open their eyes and digest a future chapter to be written from that dusty book, you know, that book that they never picked up from the library, in a lonely corner. What's it called? Ah yes, that's the section. That's called non-fiction. With attention hooked, can we take the protagonist on their life journey? The ups and downs, can we show them the bigger picture, the impact of inaction, not simply to the economy, but life itself, in all its glory, on a knife edge? And in that cutting moment, which way will it fall? Can we help guide its sway? Can we show them how the lack of environment policy not demanding we answer the hard question, guys, wicked problems to be solved. Can you put data in their hands, help them with a crossword puzzle to make informed decisions for our land? Can we disintermediate the flow of information not controlled by faceless men of corporations who seek to profit from a status quo that cannot be maintained? Disintermediate? Those who want to hide and ignore the worst cases and those who seek to alarm of only worst cases allow people to understand, to understand the risks and take their own journey, allow them to tell their own story. Can one empowered with information, armed with knowledge, for with knowledge comes enlightenment? Can one build a sense of urgency and with conviction to follow it to its bitter end? To be willing to make sacrifices on the way, a way that should have started yesterday and though we fear our fortune, let us believe, let us hope that it is not too late, that our pregnant pause has not sealed our fate, that we can get out of the starting gate. Let us embark on our journey, on its twisted and turning path that will require some radical change. We must remember to be resilient, to be tenacious, not to give up hope. We must realize that to run we must first walk, to walk we must first crawl, to crawl we must first know why. In our youth and freedom, to rejoice, to be free, our history's gaze will require that we toil. Nature's gifts are waiting and through our strains we will rebuild our lucky country and we will sing, we will advance Australia fair.
For forty years she had endured, for this had been her constant state, subjugation, her present fate, a life without, a life without her dignity, without expression of her own unique identity, independence, a foreign state, voice stolen, half-living, transparent, flickering in the shadows, a life without a cause, a hard yet fulfilled life on the land, lines etched on his face by hard-won gains, battling against all elements, against nature's bane, with a farm inherited from his father's father, with a proud lineage and strong legacy, he is a pillar of the local rural community. He doesn't say much, but is always there to support those in need, our honourable battler. An angry fellow, his face full of red rage, full of hate, his rancid, putrid breath stinking of cheap whiskey, his rotten, decayed teeth on full display, his brain shut off to rhyme or reason, his visceral thoughts, a myopic focus. Staggering forward in false bravado, he'd pick up his well-worn bat, caressing its end in theatrical play, his old trusted friend, his old acquaintance, firmly at hand in prelude, and for devastating effect, he would smile, his all-knowing smile, and with eyes full of malice, slurring incoherently, smash your fucking face. Then tensing at his fullest, he would swing that bat, with all his might, in violence, in vengeful hate, the reward for some small slight that made him remember who he was, insignificant, a pitiful man, exercising his demons, his self-loathing. And his terrible ritual would continue repeatedly, now a muscle memory, and he would slap her blooded face, again and again. And if she did not fall or cried or moaned or whimpered, or if she did not cower or crawl away, or if she did not show the fear or respect his twisted brain craved, as close to adulation as he came. He wandered his whole life between galaxies, parents, brothers and sister lost in space. They dropped away, voices silenced across the years, sorrow ever present, eyes dulled, their shadows dimming, fading away one by one between countries, losing out against warring tribes, committing depraved travesties, outdoing their own barbarity, for fear continues to be the universal currency, to be bartered and traded with others' ignominy. Years of life crawl so slowly by at the edge of civilization, in nowhere land, behind rusty wide cage fences, in paltry shanty towns, full of strangers, of ghosts, in a waiting game in no man's land, languishing in uncertainty, in the incessant heat, with swirling dust storms for company. But even though he endures the passage of time, he remains hopeful. He would not stop or change, for this was his way, why he had sought her out in the first place. For nine times she had left him, and nine times she had returned, nine incomprehensible times to us, but not to her, the denier of history, to replicate her fate. Time, waiting, offering its warm, intoxicating embrace, the final resolution, the bringer of peace, the harbinger of rest, to be rid of his anguish, to take all his troubles away. Our dear stoic farmer, so unwittingly close to his own demise, pondering his potential options, options that he dare not speak out loud because of his pride. She was not yet free. Her angry ex-husband could justify that he could lay claim on her, that it was his right, that sanctioned abuse could continue, for in his eyes he sighs. And it is in that watershed moment, at his life's tipping point, standing at the precipice, preparing himself when all is lost to take a step beyond, to flee this world, to escape his chains. And it is in that moment, in the stillness of the morning break, upon lightning skies, in that oh so precious moment as he watches the sun slowly rise, dazzling beams reach across the horizon, casting the golden rays on all to him that is precious as he hears the trilling birds cry. It is in that moment that he remembers, in that grace, that he realizes where all that is good in life envelops him, that he finally makes a decision, that he finally decides. With great strength and ultimate resolve, with all his character, with love in his eyes, of a shared history, of tears, of laughter, of pain and surprise, a lifetime in its making, against all his training, that a man must follow his code, with a never seen before openness, with pride exposed to the elements, laying down his shame. Finally, he turns to his wife. 
threatens to stop the faint-hearted from withdrawing from their future to succumbing to their perilous fate. This wonderful woman of the ages has found an inner peace, though fate has made her journey long and arduous, that finally she feels so unfettered, that finally she feels free. Oh, our heroine, our inspiration, oh gaze upon her now, our beautiful, independent woman, for a voice has finally been found. As laughter lines now crease her aged face, as she shares delightful, playful stories with her friends to break bread, to live what is left of life to the fullest, to battle for her causes, to stand proud and with dignity, and now with her own identity restored, it is time, perhaps, for her to give a little nudge to what will be her fate. Can we make the invisible visible? Are downtrodden, trembling masses casting their waning shadows on forgotten plains? Are near silent, are near vanquished majority? Our shameful oversight, hidden with our tacit knowledge, in plain view, living on the borderline, our most shirked, our most forgotten fellow man, disenfranchised, misbegotten, woeful creatures rooted unbeknownst to a fractured and dimming spotlight. Can we not just shine, just for an instant, a piercing, penetrating beam into the recesses, the crooks and crannies, and truly see, not glazing over, the uncomfortable truths of our oh-so-comfortable lives? If we had the slightest inclination, could we not draw our collective breath, inhale a little more deeply, and exhale a defiant challenge to our status quo? One that now so obviously benefits our elites, our carefully manicured role models, born to fortunate privilege, primping and preening, believing it was their talent and not their postcode. Those who walk in willful ignorance, seemingly across water, but if you took the time and peered closely, you would see that this is on the arched backs of our drowning brothers and sisters, asphyxiating in a system corrupted, no longer a meritocracy, no longer part of our vocabulary. Perhaps it never was. Corporate greed is now our mantra, our secret state, profits at exponential rates. Inflation pressures, we're told, must keep wages down, out of reach of common man, while they wallow in their big fat juicy bonuses at the top end of town, peddling a perverse inverse stew of capitalist socialism, peddling us false prophets and propaganda, the pinnacle of populist views, shamelessly, triumphantly echoes. What's in it for me? We're sowing fear and distrust of strangers, left from right, black from white, race and religion is the new regime what's in vogue our new status quo. As if there is no other honorable way, that being poor means you need to be punished, that instead of sharing the spoils for your own good, when you are down, we will not pick you up. We will not help you. We will beat you into a final submission, for you are not worthy, you in your miserable state. We will smite you. We will shame you. We will subjugate you. We will fuck you when you are down. Simply, we don't give a shit. Who sees, who knows, we are untouchable, for we wear the crown. We could draw a line, if willing. We could wake, if willing. Challenge our indoctrination. Turn off mass media owned by billionaires that numbs our senses. Hysterical infotainment parading thinly as news, desensitizing our minds falling into a stupor, leaning further and further to an alternative point of view, playing into capricious goals of a skewed racist agenda, a horrendous dystopian view of reality, an Orwellian state in the making. All in the name of progress and equity, because that is the American way, our brothers in arms, our star-spangled role model, Australia, the poor wannabe, the 51st state, a lapdog, leaving behind all sense of decency, all sense of morality, for what? To bask in the shadow of another's making, to catch the snacks that fall on the floor, for what? To be their slaves? No more. Let me tell you of the everyday Australian, 
in our vernacular, the fictitious honest battler. Let us keep their stories alive. Let us hold them ever so briefly in your mind's eye. Shining brightly our beacon to illuminate, get close, smell their desperation and despair, and use our teeth to snap, to bite, rip, tear, fray, and eventually snap. The knots that bind our fallacies, our inbred prejudices, our intemperance of those not worthy of our might. Let us hold ourselves accountable for our intolerance, our scorn, our ridicule, our unwillingness to extenuate their unfair, pitiful plight. Let me tell you of their story, but let me ensure it is not simply a flight of fancy, easily dismissed, fingers snapped in an instant due to naive simplicity, the optimism of our youth, but something oh so grounded in a brutal, uncompromising, visceral reality, an awful, chilling, heartbreaking tragedy, an unending brutality that surrounds so pitifully so many in their unfair, unjust, everyday lives. Can you imagine in our lucky country, full of overflowing riches, one in eight of our brothers and sisters live in intolerable subsistence, below the shrieking shameful poverty line, that in this land down under we have a tale of haves and have-nots, 13 unlucky percent do not unfortunately share its embarrassingly rich bountiful fare, and to add to that injustice, one in six children share that miserable fate, a dire and destitute state. And if your skin is black, and if your only sin is to be born into a sunburnt land, born as one of our First Nation, then that shocking number escalates, shatters records and shoots to 30%. It's incomprehensible, beyond comprehension. And then to pour further fuel to a beaker that is already full, let me take away our most precious commodity, what should be all of ours inalienable right, by taking away a precious gift, a span of ten years from an inglorious, unfair existence, our people from the First Nation, born to fail, bereft the gift of life, quickly and quietly dispensed. And where do we house our invisible? How do we sweep them out of plain sight, giving them no realistic option but to live on the fringes, in distant urban dwellings, in sleepy country towns, far from opportunity to live beyond the poverty line, many eking out a meagre existence, challenging them to find safe harbour, where out of 24,000 homes around Sydney, only 50 are affordable for a family on the borderline, just 50. Putting all on new start, regardless of age, health or family, soul-destroying politicians, cynically peddling bullshit, a false and evil ideology, that their amounts are fair, indexed with inflation, punishment with perpetual poverty, a shame they must continually bear. And in the same breath, voting through their shameful pay rises, perks and bonuses, tax cuts for those that don't need it, leading us all into oblivion, corporate greed at its finest, our final solution, perpetuating a cycle with major inequalities, institutionalised, built into the very fabric of Australian society. Can we make the invisible visible? Yes, we can. But only if we are willing to open our eyes, only if we have the will and the way, only if we finally, finally choose to look and not look away, to say enough is enough, for a time will come where we must all pull together to save our land, to save our planet from our shameful history, our indulgences that have raped and pillaged this land. Heartbreaking mismanagement. Otherwise, I propose that we will all vanish, screaming and scratching in pain and agony, sliding into the blackness of despair, realizing only on the way down that we too will vanish, vanish into the bleak and bleary night, invisible. Forgive me, for I fear we will stumble, we will fall, for our species has proven is incapable of more. 
We trip over our own excesses, without recognizing our indulgences, frame an equation without countenance, our regard it weighs in favor of our privilege. Lifting our gaze imperiously from a bloody floor, we pick ourselves up, squeezing out a breath so painfully, heaving with all our might, turning to sneer at those miscreants, our poor undeserving brethren the invisible, for on their backs as always we will unashamedly crawl. Our eyes fixated on futures past, illusions born from papering thin walls, a denial of our own morality, our impending inescapable mortality, a consequence for all to bear. There is no fairy tale ending here, blind optimism, wishful thinking will make no difference, we will deny all truth, and with our ever so selfish acts, our world inevitably, tragically disintegrates until our very end. Inevitably, temperatures rise, destroying all that is society. Satisfied with the consequence of our inaction, we party on, why not, to the very end. As long as if, at the very last, that gas so final to draw is ours, not theirs at the very end. Forgive me, for our inevitable extinction is the only rational scientific conclusion, for within a hundred years, civilization as we know it will surely end.